AUC's Climate Change Initiative was launched in June 2022 in response to the climate and sustainability challenges that are faced worldwide. It rests on decades of expertise at AUC for research, uh, student activities and outreach activities. The initiative rests on five main areas, motor scarcity, sustainable urban communities, global health, green finance and energy transition. Here at the Building Sciences Lab, we uh, are uh, focused on the impact of our construction materials on um, health. We are looking at the um, impact of our materials on the overall uh, building energy efficiency. We are uh, focused on um, methods that uh, we could enhance with the, uh, just the design of uh, residential structures and residential building experience. We test materials in our building sciences lab and measure their carbon footprint accordingly. The main material that we use in construction is concrete, which is mainly composed of cement. And unfortunately, producing cement has a large carbon footprint. And therefore, in my graduation project, my group and I decided to incorporate shrimp shell waste in our concrete mixture because it actually included a valuable component which was called chitin. That material, which is found in the shrimp shell waste that ends up actually in the landfill, actually has a potential use to be used in concrete because it has a positive impact on its mechanical properties. AUC always trying to have a multiple and different sustainable practices in order to have a sustainable operational campus. One of the main operations that we are trying to mitigate and to, re to reduce our consumption is energy. Moreover on this, we are trying to reach 100% of a treated wastewater to irrigate the campus and reducing the corresponding carbon dioxide emissions. The way we started this project is we wanted to bring greener areas into the dorms and we started to do this as a prototype, as a way of envisioning how to bring a more sustainable and green future into Cairo area. Basically the implementation of this kind of prototype would have a mass scale effect on decarbonization. We want to export this project outside of Cairo and outside of Egypt to implement decarbonization effects and sustainability throughout the world. Carbon dioxide capture and storage is an initiative that targets reducing the amount of greenhouse gas emissions in the atmosphere. Although there are many technologies currently working to capture the carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, their main challenge is that they're very, very costly and so it is not economical to actually apply it on a large scale everywhere in the world. So our research, in terms of capturing, what we're trying to do is we're utilizing a very low cost material which is called fly ash and we're trying to understand how well it can be used to actually store a large volume of CO2 without the need for high pressures or high temperatures. If this technology proves economical, then basically we'll be able to capture a very large amount or volume of CO2, thus reducing the amount of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere right now, and we'll also be able to store them safely underground for very long times. The research we do here at the Institute of Global Health and Human Ecology focuses on examining food safety elements and different food items. We are seeing results from for food sources being contaminated with pesticides, with different uh, heavy metals, which means that most children wouldn't have access to a nutritious diet, which means compromised growth and development. In my research, I use an approach that is really consumer-centered. I truly believe that by collaborating with parents who are the primary caregivers, as well as involving children in these discussions, we're empowering them to make informed decisions and choices about what's impacting their life and making a brighter future possible for them as well as the generations to come. One of climate change effect is that it's going to lead to rising sea level and uh, this threatens with inundation significant uh, amount of land in the Nile Delta where food is grown and therefore it uh, directly jeopardizes uh, food security. One a common solution is implementing a carbon tax. Emissions uh, as a result of this carbon tax can be reduced uh, by 6 to 10 percent, which is significant. 
The trade-off between protecting the environment and economic growth can be avoided when the government invests in renewable energy and removes energy subsidies and provides alternatives for firms and households to shift to renewable energy. At the Public Policy Hub, the student teams are working on issues related to sustainable cities, how to monitor and evaluate the uh, national climate change uh, plan and how to make sure there is localization for all climate change efforts on a national uh, basis. Here in the Center for Applied Research on the Environment and Sustainability, the Water Energy Food Nexus is the brainchild of Professor Dr. Hani Swalem. Using the abundant solar energy found in Egypt, Saline water is filtered to be used in agricultural practices for aquaculture to grow nutrient fish. This water energy food nexus is a successful step towards sustainable solutions that can deal with the challenges of climate change, mitigate the human impact on the environment, as well as provide energy, food, water security for the region.